One very powerful way to improve your rap skills is by studying other rappers. This is a really fun way to learn, and it's also a method that's going to keep you encouraged and inspired throughout the entire learning process. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing exactly how you can begin to study your favorite rappers, and I'm also going to give you some tips on things that you should be listening for. So, without further ado, let's get it! What's going on everybody? It's your boy Cole Mize with ColeMizeStudios.com where it's my main goal to help you be a better rapper now. Let's go ahead and address an elephant in the room. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of rappers out there, who believe that it's wrong for you to study other rappers and then be influenced by other rappers because they consider this biting. And so they believe that they shouldn't really listen to a whole lot of other rappers in their efforts to try to preserve their uniqueness. But the truth of the matter is, is that most of us are not as unique as we think that we are. For an example, the fact that anyone is rapping is not unique. Rapping has been a thing for many, many years. So the fact that you are rapping means you've been influenced by other rappers, which is most likely why you want to rap in the first place. OK, so you've already been influenced out the gate. All right. And then even with words that you rhyme, no, no combination of words that you rhyme is going to usually be that unique. It's likely been rhymed many, many more times before you. Any cadences, any cadence patterns you come up with your rap flow already exists most likely in music, whether it's from other rappers using that same cadence or other singers or just instruments in music and stuff like that. We're at the end of the day, we're musicians and we're making music. And with, within music, there's limitations. There's a lot of possibilities. But for an example, if you're singing a hook on a song, you're limited to the notes that are a part of the scale of that song, the key of that song. There's a limitation there. There's a lot of possibilities there, but still, there's only so far you can push something. So anyway, the main point I'm trying to get at is this. I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't allow yourself to be influenced by other rappers, because... I know for me personally, one thing that held me back for quite a few years when I was growing as a rapper early on when I first started rapping was I was totally isolated. Like when I first was getting good at rapping, I didn't even know any other rappers. There wasn't as many rappers, as many people rapping when I was coming up around the mid 90s. Right. Rapping in, it was still on the rise in its popularity and stuff. But as far as actual kids, you know, my peers at the time. Most kids was wanting to be like baseball, basketball, football stars when they grew up. I, I got the bug to start wanting to be a rapper early, early on. So anyways, I was isolated for many years and it wasn't until I really started studying other rappers and being around other rappers too. It really helped me grow tremendously. It allowed me to see so many holes in my game and it, it, it encouraged me. It showed me like, look, this is this is the bar. No pun intended. This is the bar. Like, this is the skill set I'm listening to with, with some of my favorite rappers and stuff like that. And this is where I'm currently at. If I isolated myself, I wouldn't realize that gap. As the term says, um, or the saying goes, like, you can be a big fish in a small pond. You know, you can isolate yourself from the rest of the world. And you may not realize a lot of times how much more you can improve, how much more you can grow, how much more you can learn. So isolating ourselves and not allowing ourselves to be influenced and learn from other rappers and just music in general, is really doing a disservice to us because there's so much good music out here. There's so much that we can learn from so many great artists and musicians and rappers and singers and whatnot that have gone before us. This is bigger than just hip hop, like just music, period. There's so much we can learn from. So with that being said, I'm a big fan of surrounding myself by people who are better than me, you know, in, in many different areas. It could be someone who's better than me in the physical department, like they're they're more fit than I am. And I'll keep people like that before me because that inspires me, encourages me to go harder and get better in that department. You know what I'm saying? There may be people who's more financially successful than me. Those people inspire me and encourage me to keep growing in that area. So again, Keeping things around you that encourage you, that influence you, that inspire you, that make you go, wow, that's amazing, is so important when it comes to your growth. And the same applies 100% to your rap skills. Number one, it's going to help you be a lot more diverse and just a more well-rounded rapper. 
because you're going to have a lot of different styles and flavors and stuff that influence you. And those combinations, those many different types of influences combined together is what will help you create your own type of unique sound. As the saying goes, there's nothing new under the sun and we're all in this evolution. Rapping has been evolving for many years. And so as you continue to put out your music now, you can learn from all the things that have led up until now, all the people that you find amazing and you can use that and put your own spin on it and make it fresh. And that's once again, pushing this craft, this art form further. Number two is you're going to grow a lot faster because you're going to have a reference to go by. You're going to have someone before you, you're listening to and you're comparing where you are in relation to them. And that also can keep you humble. It can keep you hungry and it'll allow you to have focus. It'll let you know, like, these are areas you need to be improving upon because listen to your favorite rapper, listen to how well they do that and compare that to how you're doing that. And that'll keep you in check and that'll allow you to grow a lot faster opposed to you being isolated and you having no reference point, then you may think you're way better than you really are. And three, it just makes the learning process so much more fun. And to me, that's very important when it comes to longevity, when it comes to the likelihood of you actually pulling through and really getting good at something, it's going to take consistency. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice of your time and you're going to have to mess up a lot and keep getting better and better and better throughout the process. And sometimes it can be discouraging and stuff. But if you're listening to other music that inspires you, it can make it a lot more fun and help encourage you like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, what they're doing is so is so amazing. I'm going to try to get closer to what they're doing, you know, and it gives you that point of reference once again. But again, it's more fun because you're listening to stuff that's like your flavor, your style, like the things that you like. So now let's talk about ways that you can actually start studying your favorite rappers right now. Number one is I recommend using a DAW or a DAW. If you don't know what that means, it simply just means digital audio workstation. This is what we use as rappers and songwriters, musicians, producers, mixing engineers, whatever. This is software that we use to basically record and work on music. And you don't have to use a doll to study your favorite rappers, but it will make the process a lot more streamlined and just a lot more smooth and easy opposed to like you just playing a song on your phone and hitting play and then hitting and rewinding and playing again and rewinding, like using a doll will allow you to like set up loop points so you can loop, let's say, for for an example, a verse or or four bars of a verse. If that's what you're studying, you can just set that loop point inside of a doll and it'll just keep repeating over and over and over again as you focus on that one little part. And uh, it can also help you identify song structure. You can you can create markers uh, within a doll and identify different parts of a song to help you understand the structure of a song. But anyways, I've already done a video on uh, the top five reasons why I believe you should use a doll for songwriting if you want to learn more about how dolls work and how you can use that with your music make sure you check out that video and i'll drop that in the video description below and if you don't have a doll yet my favorite one that i recommend is called studio one prime it's totally free doesn't cost you anything and it is by far the most full featured doll that you can get for free i highly recommend it i'll put a link to that as well in the video description all right tip number one for studying your favorite rappers is first identify what you like so much about a rapper. You don't have to study everything about every single rapper. Just focus on the thing that really impresses you about that rapper. You know, so for an example, um, DMX is not known for being the most lyrical rapper. The reason I like DMX and what I've kind of studied about DMX is his energy his vibe, his, his, his just raw emotion. That's, that's one thing that I get inspired from by DMX. Um, he's also written some really, really good songs. And what I get out of DMX too is you don't have to be super complex lyrically to write really good songs that move people emotionally. I mean, DMX just comes off to me as someone who's just super raw and emotion and energy and stuff. And, and similar reason why Tupac is someone also that's inspired me for that very reason. Very good songs that, that can move you, move your soul when you listen to some of them and they're not overly complex. So that's a good reminder to me that, hey, look, you know, on some songs that should be the focus. It doesn't have to be as, as lyrically complex as let's say like Eminem. 
Um, that's one reason why I would study Eminem is he's so complex. He's so technical. You know, a lot of times Eminem leaves me like, wow, like really impressed by the how technical or how complex something he just did was. There's a lot of reasons why uh, I study Eminem, um, but that's just one of them. Just to give you an example between Eminem and DMX, there's clear differences, but they're both really amazing rappers for different reasons. So try to identify what you think is so dope about the rapper that you want to study and then focus on that. Now, with that being said, some rappers like Eminem, for an example, are very diverse. So they won't always sound the same on every song or every album. And so with that being said, there also may be certain songs by one artist, by one rapper that you study for different reasons. You know, so like Eminem may have one type of song that's more like storytelling, like let's say the song Stan. And that may be why you study that song, because you're kind of studying how he wrote it and how he he, he started the story off in the beginning and how he ended it and how he kept it going throughout and kept you engaged. And you may study it for that reason. Um, opposed to another song, you may study because of how crazy the rhyme schemes are. Just like, oh my gosh, or the punchlines, etc. So figure out what it is that you like about that rapper or that song by that rapper and then hone in on that. You don't have to study every single thing about every single rapper or song. Focus on what inspires you, motivates you, encourages you, and just really impresses you about that rapper and that song. So let's get a little bit more specific. Let's say you're studying a rapper because of their rhyme schemes, like an Eminem, for an example. You can actually structure their lyrics to my bar sheets. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with, with what bar sheets are, it allows you to structure lyrics in musical time so you know exactly how everything is landing from one bar to the next on what beat and all that stuff. This is actually something I created for my students and you can get a free download of this, get a free copy of this. I'll post a link in the top of the video description below. Um, but bar sheets can be very helpful in structuring lyrics and, and identifying and understanding how the rhymes are structured, for an example. It'll let you know, okay, like, look, they got a rhyme scheme, let's say, for an example, for four bars, you got a rhyme landing on every fourth beat, but they also get like an internal rhyme landing around the third beat or the second beat or whatever. Structuring lyrics will allow you to identify those patterns and help you understand a little bit more specifically about what's going on with the rhyme schemes. This is allowing you to have a visual representation of what they're doing with their rhyme schemes, opposed to just relying on your ears. And if you wanted to learn more about how to use bar sheets, I've already done a video tutorial on this. I'll post a link in the video description below as well. Okay, tip number two is songwriting. That's another thing you should be focusing on listening for when it comes to some of your favorite rappers. For an example, there's many different types of songs, right? You get to have songs that's uh, more just reflective on how you feel and kind of what you're going through. And that's, that's one kind of very common default. A lot of newer rappers will, will kind of start writing songs from, right? But there's many types of songs, lots of different perspectives and angles and creative ways that you can write a song. And so that's one thing to listen for with certain rappers. Like I'll give you one for an example, Joyner Lucas just came out with a song about four months ago called Will. And it's about like his, how much he's looked up to like Will Smith throughout, you know, his childhood and growing up. And he uses a lot of uh, the characters from Will Smith's career and incorporates that into a song. It's very creative. It's very different. Um, it's not a typical way that you would, you know, write a song. It's a, it's a unique angle. On the flip side of that, Joyner Lucas also has another song called I'm Not Racist. And it's, it's so different from what you would think a typical rap song would be. You know, it's, it's almost like spoken word poetry and he's speaking it from a black angle and a white, white angle. And he's writing, he's rapping from both angles. It's very creative. And he's putting himself in other people's shoes and rapping from both different people's positions. And so I think that's very, very interesting and unique. So there's many different types of ways that you can write a song. And so that's one thing to listen for when it comes to certain rappers. Eminem's another one, writes many different types of songs. Some songs may sound cartoonish and you know it's not real. You know, like um, his song, Guilty Conscience. Um, there's many types of songs where he, it's like the cartoonish, like Slim Shady element comes out. There's also other songs that are like really serious and intimate, like Mockingbird or like Beautiful. Um, those are very heartfelt, serious songs where he's like opening up and being vulnerable. And then he has other songs where it's more about showing off his lyrical skills and letting you know that, hey, you're not messing with me, you know, like Godzilla in, in uh, Rap God. 
many different types of songs and different songs have served different purposes. So that's one thing to listen out for. And that can give you ideas of different ways, different types of songs that you can write. And also when it comes to songwriting, pay attention to song structure. Every song doesn't have to be like a four bar intro going into like a 16 bar verse and going into an eight bar hook and it repeats all that. There's a lot of different ways that you can structure a song. Also, again, going back to Joyner Lucas, some of those verses could be very long. They may be like 24 bars or 32 bars or whatever. You can take as long as you want. Everything doesn't have to be an exact song structure or, or just a typical common cookie cutter type of song structure. Pay attention to that. You know, there's a lots of different ways that you can structure a song. And that's something that you should be listening for from a songwriting tip when it comes to you studying your favorite rappers. And again, this is another reason why I recommend using a doll when you're studying songs, because you can load up a song in a doll and you can identify the song structure and you can make your markers. And that way you can just have a visual snapshot once again to where you can literally look and say, OK, that's the verse. That's the hook. OK, blah, blah, blah. And you can just visually see how that song is structured in a pretty easy, in pretty easy manner. So um, if you haven't already, uh, be sure to check out my video on song structure. If you're not quite sure what I'm still talking about, about song structure and how to identify different sections of a song, check that out. And I'll post a link in the video description below. Another one, another big one is wordplay, right? If you listen to a rapper has like really good punchlines and metaphors and double entendres and stuff like that. That's another thing to study a rapper for. Um, one rapper that comes to mind is Sahada Hada Prince. You may never even heard of him. Um, He's not a newer rapper. He's just not as mainstream as a lot of other rappers are, but he's a, an Atlanta based rapper. Um, and he's done a lot of like songwriting with like Kanye West and stuff like that. But he's incredible with punchlines. Like, dude, when I listen to him, he can write really good songs. Like he can write really good hooks. That's one thing that impresses me about Sahada Hada Prince. But what really stands out is his punchlines. He's super heavy and super witty with punchlines. So when I, when I listen to Sahada Hada Prince, he he inspires me to like okay step up to that punchline game you know what i'm saying like whoo wee that boy is fire so study that about certain rappers if that's something that really sticks out to you and really impresses you and you feel like man my punchline game could be a little bit stronger that's something i maybe i'm not incorporating as much into my lyrics you know maybe you're focusing on rhyming too much already maybe you got that on lock but you need to add some punchlines in there every now and then on certain songs that may be appropriate and so you can study like rappers that, that are punchline heavy. Uh, Ludacris is another one. Um, there's a rap group called Field Mob. They're, they're not active now, but punchline rappers, man, they use, you have heavy, heavy punchlines. Um, so you could study, you know, those rappers and take note of like how they use the punchlines. Do they, do they set up their punchlines? Are they more like one liners and how often do they do it? And you know, what's their, how are they writing their punchlines? Like just, paying attention to how they word things and phrase things. And you can use that to kind of help you come up with your own punchlines. The third major thing to listen for when it comes to rappers is their delivery. Man, so many different rappers sound so different, you know, and one of my favorite things to do, I still do this, is I will mimic the way rappers sound, like their voice. And some rappers I can get closer to than others because they're just more closer to my vocal range you know but like uh but i love like impersonating rappers like dmx hey you're my man you know what i'm saying like learning how to do different people's voices allows me to learn how to manipulate my voice more so like dmx he has like what i would consider like a distortion on his vocal right that, uh, you know what i'm saying hey, hey, you're, hey you're my man i can take that and then i can do a slight variation in my own raps and not sound like dmx but i'm using that that distortion I'm using that, dos that, 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 that distortion almost like an effect. Like I could like, uh, instead of going like the heavy, you know what I'm saying? You're my man. I'm like, I could be like, uh, yo, I'm putting the tassin up in the path tashin. Flack and the crap and ass the plastic nashin. I find the casting up and up on the passion. Like certain words I'm adding a little distortion to. And I'm not trying to be full DMX, but I'm just taking that little technique of, of distortion from his voice that I, that I learned that from. And I'm applying it to my own verses on certain songs or whatever if I, if I feel like it calls for it another uh, unique one is like Lil Wayne for an example you know Lil Wayne you know sometimes he talk like this right here man <laughs> and then they're like uh, mumble rappers you know hey, look how much I'm an innocent I'm an innocent 
I look at him. I look at him. I look at him. I look at him. Like, I just like mimicking the way different rappers sound. And I may use certain elements of certain things. I may not use it verbatim and try to sound exactly like them. But by me learning how to mimic different sounds for different rappers, it's allowing me to give me more options when I'm trying to get a certain type of sound out of my voice for a certain song, you know, because like the way I approach each song is I adapt to the emotion and the energy of the instrumental. I like rapping over lots of different types of instrumentals. So when I'm scatting over an instrumental, I'm playing around with my delivery a lot. And so I've noticed that like certain types of instrumentals i'll play around with different aspects of my delivery and so like mimicking a lot of rappers and stuff is just fun but it's a way that you can learn how to get more sounds out of your voice okay the fourth thing to listen for is rap flow this is a big one big big one man if you really love the way that a particular rapper flows memorize that rapper's verse just re just try to memorize one verse from beginning to end get it to the point where you can rap it flawlessly I mean, like, play the song, rap the verse over the rapper, and it should sound like you're covering him up or her up perfectly throughout the verse. If you can do that, if you memorize a rapper's verse, if you memorize the lyrics, you've also ty typically memorized the flow, okay? And so that's a flow that you can use while you approach different songs, while you're scatting and, and things of that nature, because this is actually how, how I began rapping from the very, very beginning, before I even tried to even rap, like, my own stuff. I memorized an entire song. It was Coolio Gangsta's Paradise. It was like 1995 when it first came out. And for whatever reason, when I heard that song, it just mesmerized me. I was just obsessed with it. And I remember like going outside. This is before Rap Genius. And you could just pull up lyrics. And I remember I had my little CD player. And uh, I would just keep that song on loop. And I would just write down the lyrics. You know, it took a while to even get all the lyrics. And then once I, d I did that, I would just practice rapping it. That taught me so much. A, it, it, it taught me to really appreciate the skill that goes into rapping. And, and I realized that this is not easy. Like That took a lot of practice to, to learn all those little micro timing movements and how long to hold each syllable and every bar, where to come in at and stuff like that. But you will learn so much more about flow and different ways to move around to the beat than you that you may not normally be using. And so this is a really good way to make you a lot more diverse when it comes to your flow. And again, if you learn pieces of your favorite rap songs or even hooks, that's that's no different than you having a guitar and you learning how to play guitar solos on your guitar or piano or whatever instrument it is. It's the same exact thing. If you learn pieces of your favorite rap songs, then you're technically practicing music. You're learning musical patterns, right? And so that's one great way. If you like a rapper's flow, you should learn that rapper's flow. You should be able to you, you should be able to perfect it. You should be able to like incorporate it into your scatting when you're scatting over different tracks. You should be able to wrap it over that song of that rapper's song perfectly. That's one good way to really always continue to improve your rap flow and make it a lot more diverse. Just think about how many songs are out there, how many songs you probably already know. That's something you can tap into right now. You don't even necessarily have to learn anything new. Just dwell on all the stuff you already know and use that when you're approaching your new song or your verse. The fifth thing that you should be listening for when studying your favorite rappers is the instrumentals that they choose to rap over. The instrumental in and of itself has a big influence on how that rapper sounds. Um, so let's say for an example, you're just studying a particular artist and you, they have a, a particular sound. You notice like across the board, like their, their beats sound a certain type of way, whether that's like boom bap, you know, like East Coast or like lo-fi sounding, or if it's more like a trap, Southern trap sound or whatever it is, you can search the internet for that artist and then follow that up with type beat. Like if you Google that, like on YouTube and stuff like that, you'll find other producers have made instrumentals that sound like a particular artist. Um, and that can be a good way for you to kind of get uh, your bearings around different types of styles and sounds of instrumentals. You can you can learn about the producers that made those beats as well if you want to dive in even deeper. But if you're trying to switch up your sound, also look into switching up the types of instrumentals that you're rapping over. So that's something to pay attention to when you listen to your favorite rappers. So even if you don't plan on writing a song over a type instrumental, like let's say Eminem type instrumental, J. Cole type instrumental, 
you could still just use that as a as a as a tool to scat over. Like you could play it off of YouTube or Spotify or iTunes or wherever those beats are. And you could just use that as a tool to scat, and that can help make you once again more diverse. Rapping over beats you normally wouldn't rap over will make you a lot more well-rounded so you won't be boxed in to rapping like the same type of way on the same exact instrumentals. Different instrumentals, different sounds and vibes and flavors and stuff open up more possibilities of what you can do over the song. So let's do a quick recap. The first step to studying your favorite rappers is just first take a step back and ask yourself, what do you think is so interesting about that rapper? And focus on that. You don't have to study everything about every single rapper. If you really like their rhyme schemes, consider structuring their rhyme schemes using my bar sheets to have a better understanding of what they're actually doing with their rhyme scheme patterns and how often they're changing things up and how long they're keeping these, these patterns going. Two, when it comes to songwriting, focus on the different types of songs, right? Is it a storytelling song? Is it a braggadocious song? Is it a song that's more about going to the club or is it a really deep and thought provoking and very conscious song? Focus on different types of songs. Also focus on song structure. How long are the verses? How long are the hooks? How many verses are there? How many hooks are there? Focus on that. And wordplay. If, if they're really good with punchlines and metaphors and similes and double entendres and stuff like that, keep that stuff before you. Focus on those things. Write them down. Take note of them. See if you can use those things to see if you can come up with your own variations of punchlines and stuff like that. Focus on how they set them up and how they execute them. Is it a one-liner uh, punchline or is it something that's set up for multiple bars or a whole verse or even a whole song? Delivery. Get in the habit of mimicking the way your favorite rappers sound and you'll learn how to use and manipulate your voice even more to get different types of sounds and textures out of your own voice. Listen to their rap flow. If you love the way they're flowing, memorize their lyrics. Whether it's just a verse or even a piece of a verse, like four or eight bars, just memorize some of what they're doing and then that way you can use that that flow and stuff on one of your own songs and tweak it and manipulate it or whatever and five focus on the instrumentals if you really like their beats start searching out those type of beats google whatever the artist is type beats see if you can find some of those beats maybe even learn about who produced them and dig deeper into that but rapping over different types of instrumentals will allow you to be a lot more diverse with your sound and just a lot more well-rounded as a rapper. So quick question, let me know if there's a rapper or a particular song by a rapper that you would like me to break down and maybe share what I think is interesting about it. Let me know in the comment section below and who knows, I may just cover it one day. And if you're new to my channel, make sure before you leave, you get a copy of my ebook, The Number One Fundamental to Rapping. This is a valuable tool for all rappers up and coming or even rappers who have a few years of experience. It's gonna really help get you on a fast track to how this whole rapping thing works. It's really easy to read. You could read it like in a few minutes, 20, 30 minutes. And it's gonna tell you what I believe to be the number one fundamental to rapping. And also the bar sheets that you heard me talking about in today's video, you're also gonna get that and some even more uh, free goodies uh, when you opt in. So make sure you get that. Don't cheat yourself, treat yourself, okay? Again, this is Cole Mize with ColeMizeStudios.com and always remember when it comes to rapping, there's no rules, there's only techniques. Peace. Hey man, you see that subscribe button right there? Get the bell icon. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Hey, I know you see that like button, right? Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. And look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself today I'm gonna. Kill it.